What's up everyone? Today, I'm gonna be going over how to take notes on the iPad Pro, or any iPad in general, really. I have the M1 iPad Pro, the brand new one, so I'm gonna give my thoughts on it and show you how I like to take notes on this device. So let's get into the video. Now, first off, we gotta figure out which is the best note-taking app for you. Now, I like OneNote because OneNote is the most versatile. It works on any operating system like Windows and Mac OS and web applications and you can share the notes folders to other people as well. So I can share them to my classmates and by the end of the semester, half the class has my notes that's happened before. So OneNote I really prefer because of the versatility that it offers. There's also Notability and I like to do my homework in Notability because it exports to PDF a lot better than OneNote. Notability has page by page selection so it's not an infinite scrolling like OneNote is. So Notability is what I like to use for my homework. Now there's also GoodNotes 3. I haven't tried it because it costs money and I haven't spent money on it yet. But I will try it in the future, so maybe in the future hit subscribe and get ready for a more in-depth comparison in all the note-taking apps. But for today, I'm going to show you the basics of how I go about using OneNote to take notes on my iPad. Now like I said before, the biggest mistake I see a lot of people making is not adding enough context into their notes. And I've seen some people put this, go to the extreme with this, and not take any notes at all, and then rely solely on the professor's notes and then just pay full attention to lecture to get as much context on the notes as possible. Well, I don't think this is the best way to learn or to take notes in general by just relying on the professor's notes and your memory of what the professor said, but I would recommend doing your pre-lecture reading, pre-lecture notes, and then filling out any missing information or gaps of information that you had from the notes into context in your notes. So that's what I like to do. I'll take pre-lecture notes and then fill in any gaps of missing information or context that I was missing that the professor told me into my notes. That way I'm not too distracted by worrying about what the professor is writing down on the board and reading bad handwriting or anything like that, but I'm also not too worried about missing uh, anything that he says at the lecture or that. All right, I wanna go over some of the mistakes I think people make when they take notes on their laptop or iPad in general. So first off, for the humanities majors or people who type their notes, like words and sentences, I think the biggest mistake these people make is that they type exactly what's either already in the lecture notes or on the PowerPoint slides, or write a transcript of what the professor is saying during the lecture. This is helpful so all the information is there, but what you're doing is you're not creating a mental connection for you to be actively recalling the things that are in the notes or the information that is being presented to you. What you should do instead is you should rephrase the words into your own sentences. That way it makes more sense to you and you develop a deeper connection with the material itself. Now for the STEM subjects like math, physics, chemistry, the biggest mistake I see is you not putting enough context into your notes. You would write down a bunch of equations and a bunch of like solutions to problems or solutions to equations or anything like that with no context to what they mean or any information about how these steps you took or what assumptions you made to solve this equation or what the variables mean in the equation. So what I would recommend is for every single like section you write, maybe write two or three sentences quickly explaining what you did in that section instead of just leaving a bunch of math or a bunch of pictures or something, a bunch of graphs or formulas just in there. Make sure you put sentences explaining the formulas or the graphs or the pictures or anything that's in there. That way you develop more of a connection and more context behind it. So when you recall the notes, you can remember that a lot easier about what was going on inside of the notes. If you go to look back at your notes and just see a bunch of math equations everywhere, you'll probably have no clue what they mean or anything like that. And bonus tip for everyone, when you title your notes inside of OneNote or Notion or anything like that, don't title them like Lecture 1, Lecture 2, Lecture 3. Don't do that. What you should do instead is title them based on the content that you're going over. So I would like to pre-read my lecture notes and then pre-title my notes, 
or title my notes after the lecture so that I can have an appropriate title going over the content that's inside of the notes so I know what it is that I'm looking at. Now I'm going to show you an example of my notes on my iPad so I can show you how I like to take notes on here. So starting with the stem notes that I take. So basically what I like to do, and I think the biggest mistake people make when taking notes in STEM or math classes in general, is that they lose a lot of context in their notes, so they'll never look back at their notes. If your notes are just an entire page of equations, then that's bad. You're not going to know what these equations are for, what they mean, or what they do in the future when you have to recall these notes. So I would recommend you highly invest in writing down more context into your equations. I would recommend putting as many words or sentences explaining the equations into your notes as you do equations, at least maybe one sentence per like, you know, few steps of equations so that you can follow what's going on or what these equations mean and what variables stand for so you'll never forget. So as you can see, typically what I like to do is I'll keep all my math on the left side around here. So this side is all gonna be like my math stuff or the graphs or the pictures or anything like that that you're gonna need to show for uh, your work and you put into your notes. And on the right side is where I typically like to put a lot of my sentences and stuff. Sometimes I'll mix them in the middle, but for the most part I like to put them on the right side because it makes them, puts them more out of the way so the math flows more fluidly. Unless there's a hard break on the mathematics, I don't want to interfere with, you know, step-by-step -step instructions on solutions to problems or anything like that. So I'll put context on the right side. It's kind of like Cornell style, except for instead of putting, uh, like, questions or main topics on the left side, I'll put all my math on one column, and then I'll put all the context on the other column. But there's no hard break on the column, I'll allow myself to go as far as I want on here. So now I'm going to show you uh, how I took notes inside of a humanities course when I was typing my notes. Ignore the title here, I don't know why the title didn't import properly into OneNote, uh, this is a really old notebook so maybe it's a little different, but anyway, as you can see here, I took notes on basically the main topics each here and put in bullet points on like basically the main points of the topic. So those bullet points are the notes and they're organized through the main topics of the heading here. And as you can see, the bullet points aren't just a transcript of what the professor said. They're my own words of what I think each uh, section is or what I learned from each section or the important points and topics that are from each section. So, as you can see, I didn't. I, I also didn't use complete sentences sometimes too because I like to stay more focused and onto what the professor is saying. So I want to shorten up my sentences a little more so that I get a little less context in there, but I still get enough so that I remember what's going on in here. And I think that's probably the biggest tip I have for you is to take pre-lecture notes as well because these pre-lecture notes let you pay more attention during lecture to absorb the information again as far as second time and for the second time you'll absorb it even better and understand it even more given more context from the professor during lecture and you can write that context down into your notes so you'll understand it and retain it even more. Now after lecture, I'll go through and clean up my notes a little bit, but I won't really rewrite them or anything too much anymore. I will just clean them up after lecture so that any bad handwriting I had or missing information, I'll just clean it up. And that's it. That's my way of taking notes in on my iPad. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know if you want more videos just like this. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye. And that's it. That's how I take notes on my iPad. Like the video if you learned something and hit subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll be going over more note taking advice and college advice in the future. So let me know what you want to see and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.